Welcome back everyone, Monty here from IG. We're going to pick up where we left off. And last time we had a chart open in our workspace. And this time around we're going to take a look at the charting. We're going to find our product, make sure we know it's the right product that we want. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the charts. So we had a chart open last time. Let's go ahead and close it and start afresh just in case someone's starting with us from the beginning. And what we're going to do, you can either, if we want to look for USD, it's either going to be under FX, right? Because it's a Forex currency pair. So you can click on that and you'll see your USD over there. And you can take a look at the chart from there. You can place trades. You can add it to the workspace and close it. We did that in the last video. Or you can go to the search bar. Your USD is there. Let's go ahead and take this one. We're going to add it to our workspace because this is the chart we're going to be using to get to know more about our product. So let's expand, make sure it covers our entire workspace screen. And first thing that you're going to want to notice in this case is it says there at the top your USD mini. So let's click on that right there. Make sure we're looking at the right product because there's spot. And when we get to commodities, you're going to see that there's futures as well. And you can see that there are two, two instruments under your USD. In this case, you've got your USD and then you've got your USD mini. So how do you know exactly what the characteristics are of this contract? You'll notice that the prices are the same, so not really seeing a difference there. But what you can do is in the top right corner, right there you'll see an I, the information button. You can click on that and it's going to give you the details with regards to your contract. M most importantly, the contract size. So in this case, for the EURUSD it's 100,000, but when we click on EURUSD mini, you'll see that it drops to 10,000. So it's a tenth. And that means that the value of a single point for the mini is going to be a dollar compared to the other contract where it's going to be $10, 10 times more. So you need to keep that in mind when it comes to position management, when it comes to uh, uh, risk management in terms of how much you're risking for get, having that contract and if the price does go against you, how much it's going to cost. Now let's take a look at um, gold in this case. So let's go under commodities. Uh, let's There's gold right there. Again, you can search, but Let's add this to our workspace. And because we already have a product there, you'll see that now we've got two tabs, one for your USD, one for gold. And let's click on that and see what we have available. We've got spot and we've got futures. For spot, we've got a few contracts there. Let's click on futures. Let's look at the nearest one, the Feb 20. And again, you click on this one, you go to information and it's going to tell you more about you know, you can find the expiry date because futures contracts expire unlike uh, spot products. So for now, let's close that. Let's go back to your USD. And in this case, let's assume that we want to look at the full your USD contract. This is what we plan to trade on. But for now, we're going to focus on the charting. Let's go through all these items at the top over here. So first off, you're going to notice the time frame. It's saying over there one hour, but you can change the time frame. You can change it to, for example, let's go with a larger time frame. So let's go with four hours. Click on that. And here we go. So now every bar on this candlestick chart represents four hours. So that's what price did over that four hour period. And then you move on to the next candle. That's what happened in the four hours afterwards. The range, it went, you know, how, how low it went, what the high was, the open and the close, uh, and so on and so forth. And what that's going to do, of course, it's going to help you map out where price has been and how it's gotten to where it is. You want to drag the chart, you click on it, you move it sideways, you can drag the chart. Let's do it again. Let's drag again click and you drag and you can go back you can you can go back you can go back and forth and um, let's go to the next item this is a nice interesting one this is if you want to look at what ha what's happened over over a certain period of time so let's say I want to know what happened over the past day so I click on day the time frame is switched to 15 minutes and it tells me now at the time of this recording it was Tuesday well, what happened from Monday to Tuesday over this past over the past 24 hours? How has market reacted? Gives me a better idea in the short term in terms of what moves have happened. You know who got stopped out, um, who benefited, so on and so forth. And we can also go to a specific date. In this case, let's say I want to go to October. What is it, 18th on a Friday? And now you can see what happened during that week as well. So. That's also an option. You can go to a specific date or you can see the look past day, the past week, the past month, so on and so forth. Well, you all notice is that down below there's this blue line and there's these two arrows, one pointing to the right, one pointing to the left. And what, what you do is when you drag it in one direction, I'm able to find out what's happened over this period of time. And of course, I can change the time frame and that's going to zoom into that 
select to that area. And if you want to go back to the beginning, go to the latest price, and that'll take you back to the price. So let's let's zoom back in to that level. And what I'm doing is I've zoomed it to the beginning of about to the beginning of January. But let's say I want to drag it out to say December. So I want to see what happened from December up until now. I take that. I drag it out towards the beginning of December. Voila. So almost the past two months. But what if I just want to look at December? Well, I bring that one back. And oh, again, you could look at it from there, the one month, and then drag it accordingly. But what you can do here is you can do that and it'll show you from the beginning of December until the end of December. You can also take it, click on it, and drag it across. So you don't need to keep moving the arrows. If you want to look at it from month to month, you can look at November, then October, and so on and so forth. Drag it back to the front if you like. It really you know, depends on, on, on what area you want to look at. And again, click latest price and you're back to where you started again. Now you can scroll with your mouse or if you don't have a mouse or if you don't want to scroll using it, you can zoom in and zoom out using those functions right over there. Um, this next feature is my favorite really because a lot of time as a trader, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on the four charts. But a lot of times as a trader, it's really important to start with the long term view and zoom into the chart that you to the time frame that you trade on. So in this case, by default, it went daily four hours, one hour, five minutes. And what we're going to do is we're going to take another product. Let's take Tesla, for example. Um, we're going to add it to the workspace, which means it's going to give us another tab. Um, and we're going to switch to four charts and you can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm going to put a monthly and you can change these time frames. You can make, put a weekly and then let's say I want to put a daily and then I want to zoom into ideally, for example, a four hour or if you're trading a one hour chart, let's put a one hour chart. Now take a look at the monthly. You can see that as of late, there's this big move upwards, especially that last candle, quite volatile. You look at the weekly, it's happening on a much more it's been it looks like a you know really decent bull trend. Um, you look on the daily bit of consolidation at the top stalling a little bit, whereas you look at the one hour and it's very consolidatory. So if you started with the one hour chart, let's go back to the one hour. Let's say you opened your workspace and, and you just saw the, the one hour chart. This is what you would see a little bit of a bullish move, but then a bit consolidatory and retracement. And you wouldn't be you'd be missing the big picture. And so what's a good idea is you start up, you put it on the four the the, the four charts within the same window, you take a look at everything, you see where everything stands. And then after you're done, you can just zoom right back into the trade to the one that you like, for example, the one hour. So let's go back to Euro USD. In this case, um, you know, you look at, at uh, it's daily four hour, one hour and five minutes. But again, you can change it the way you like. Um, so let's and, and you can go from right to left, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise, however it is that you like to to do this. You can see that on the daily bit bearish, four hour looking a lot more bearish one hour bearish, but more consolidatory bit of retracement on the 15 minute, just a real consolidatory session. So see how it makes a difference depending on what time frame you're trading. Let's move on to indicators. Uh, what I'm going to do is let us know what indicator you want, but I'm just going to look at moving average, just a simple one. We've had some requests on that. You can see that there's a I letter right over there with a circle around it, and that'll give you information in terms of um, the information regarding it. But if you click on moving average, one, three will show up. I've just changed it up a bit. You can click and add more. Um, if you want the 20, the 50 and 100 uh, moving average, you can have that as well. If you do want to change it up a bit. So for example, if you say no, I don't want to have the 100. If I don't want to have the 20, I want to I want to have it so that it's 200, you know, 100 and 50. I'm doing this the hard way, by the way, just to keep things in, chron in chronological order. But if you have the 50, 100 and 200, you can change up the colors a bit. You know, blue is your favorite color. And there you go. Now you've got the 200, 100 and the 50 available. So and it, now you can see compared to price where exactly it stands. You can also shift to the daily time frame and these will now be the daily moving averages. So again, we're not going to go through each one of these uh, technical indicators. Um, you can remove it from either there or from where you selected it. The moving average, you, where you see that check, you click again and it gets removed. So pretty straightforward stuff. Up next, let's go ahead and look at the, let's draw some lines and some stuff. You can either show the drawing toolbar. That's one way to look at it. You can select it from there. You could select it also from, from this. And also you can right click and you'll see indicators are there. Drawings are there as well. And you can select the drawing that you want from that section. So let's go in and take one of them. You know, we take an arrow, for example, you want to point out a certain area and, um, or for example, a bear trend channel. In this case, let's drag it down, take a look at it. You can see a bit of a bear trend forming here on the bear trend channel forming on the four hour chart. 
something to keep in note. Let's uh, let's take a rectangle and maybe take a look at a certain consolidatory or relative consolidation over there. And if you want to remove some of these, all you have to do is you can either right one thing to do is right click and, and click delete. Um, but another thing you can do is you can go up and at the bottom there it'll say delete all drawings so everything gets cleared so you don't have to go one by one and delete everything and you can also remove the drawing toolbar or you can close it right over there and you're back to a nice clean screen so that's in terms of uh, images let's look at the next item and this really is important for those of you who want to look at the charts with a naked eye you don't want to have additional items so sometimes you'll have drawings you don't want to delete them, but you want to remove them or indicators. You go just temporarily, you want to remove it and you want to look at the chart. This is especially true with open positions. A lot of times we get emotional if a, if a position is there. We can't look at the charts objectively because we have an open position like a buy position. So we just assume it's going to go up and we're not looking at what the chart is telling us. We're looking at where we want it to go. Now, of course, your positions will still be there and we'll get to this when we get to trading section. But what you want to do is if you don't want to have the open positions, then you can go ahead and click on that and you won't see the open positions or the working order, as well as the price line. Let me give an example. Um, now we've removed the price line. Um, well, I'll keep it there. Let me put it there so I can show you how it looks when you zoom out. If you're looking at a chart, that price line is still there and that might affect your judgment of where you think price was going to go. So you can remove it and look at it more objectively. So that's something else to do. Let's go back to latest price. Up next, let's go into some of these items here, such as events. Now. If you are looking at economic calendar events like for the US, there's a big one coming up, but let's just select all. And what you'll see is at the bottom of the screen, you see these little calendar icons. Now, the, the closest one that's of significance is the Fed's announcement. Now, if that's coming up, you, it's, it's handy to know while you're trading. So you go, okay, let me get out right before the event if you're not looking to trade the news and you don't want to experience significant volatility. And there are, there are events for different countries. Now, because you're trading your USD, Usually, you want to look at what's coming out of the Eurozone and the U.S. because those are the two aspects of the pair. So we have U.S. selected. You can also select for the Eurozone. And if you're trading GBP USD, you want to have the for the U.K. If it's Euro GBP, for example, you want to have the U.K. and the Eurozone. For the types of uh, charts, we're looking at candlestick, but there are also some other types that you can look at. You can right-click and go to type of chart, line chart. Um, you know, you got the high, low, open, close. You got the mountain chart, which is pretty much a line chart, but with color, colored uh, underneath. And let's go back to candlestick. This is going to be our default. So you can right click, or you can go over there, and you can see the type of charts. You see the price. If you we're looking at the mid price, but if you like to look at the ask or the bid price, depending on you know, it, it's, it depends on your preference. And then you've got layouts. Now, let's say I have a certain layout, certain you know, I colored my charts a certain way. I want to save as, for example, MS. So this is a time frame of four hours. Let's pull up another chart. Let's take Tesla again. Comes in standard chart, but let's say it's on a monthly and I want to go back to, I want it to be the same layout as the other. So apply MS and lo and behold, it's back to the four hour chart. Of course, when you have a lot more things on there, like, like uh, indicators and things like that, and you've changed your colors, then it's going to matter uh, what layout you save as. You can also customize the appearance if you want to change the, uh, the the color of the of the bull candle. Some people like black on white, so um, white for a bull candle, black for a bear candle. You've got blue and red, different coloring that people like. It's up to you. You can also do the same for all different types of charts like the line chart, the mountain chart, and so on and so forth. And of course, there's you can export your chart. So if it's something you want to share um, on social media or you want to send over to a friend, say, hey, let's take a look at the chart, look at what I saw. Now, in this case, I'm just showing a chart, which they can obviously pull up. But what if you had certain drawings and things like that on there? So let's go ahead and add some drawings into there and, and let's put some indicators on there. Um, let's put, for example, our, our moving average to three, and then we can put in, for example, our uh, bear trend channel. And I'm like, you know, I want to tell my friend about this. So what I can do it, go there and I just go export chart and you can see, voila, there it is. It's right there for you. And do you remember how I said you can remove those? So let's say I don't want to look at those for now. Click on indicators, click on drawings, and it's gone. Now I'm just looking at the chart. And if and after if I want to see them again, I just go, okay, no, you know what? Now I want to go back and put it and see what's what. So let's go ahead and clear those out. You can delete all drawings, or you can right-click on the drawing. 
You can deselect if you want to get rid of any of the economic calendar items. You can say deselect all. So that's pretty much it. Up next, we're going to take a look at trading. And that means we're going to look at those three items you can see in the top right corner. Uh, we got the deal, the order, the alert, and the information. Again, we'll look at the information in more detail. So stay tuned for that from all of us here at IG. Thank you so much for watching.